So hello everybody, my name is Maggie Carey and I am the owner of Master It Media. At Master It Media, I help businesses reach and retain customers by providing the most amount of promotion for the least amount of investment in their time, money, and stress. So during our wonderful time dealing with COVID-19, we still need to work on our businesses. So when we are back to a new normal, we are going to be hitting the ground running. So today's topic is going to be about Google My Business. And Google My Business, as you can see here in this, um, in this little screenshot from a phone, Google My Business is an account you can get, but it's more than a business lead listing. Google My Business is something that you, when you search for a business, if I put in the music cottage, it's going to come up with a listing on the right hand side that has pictures and images. Now you may think that's part of the Google's regular search or a paid service. It is not, it's a free service that you can create a business profile on and you can easily connect with customers across Google search and if you have a physical location on Google Maps. Now with a Google My Business account, you can see and connect with your customers, you can post updates, you can see how customers are interacting with your business on Google. There is an amazing insights tool into Google and in, in this Google My Business uh, account that you can create and find out who are the people that are coming to your page, what are they looking for, what are they doing, and how are they interacting with you so that you can create more engaging posts and also look at the services you're providing and see what's of interest to the people visiting the page. In addition, a Google My Business account contains things like your address, uh, but don't worry, even if you don't have a physical address, with Google My Business, you can put in an area, a coverage area. So for example, with Master at Media, I didn't put in my physical address. I covered um, Duchess, Putnam, and Westchester. So I have that as my coverage area. You could also pick the United States or worldwide. Um, you also would put in your phone number, your website, and open hours. Keep your profile updated with fresh photos, special offers, and promotions to make it easier for customers to, to choose you. And this, as you can see on the right, here's a, you know, a yoga studio. You can follow this yoga studio as well as, you know, if this were your business page, it would say whether it's open or not. You can see there's an overview, photos, posts, and about. It gives you the physical location that is accessible through Google Maps. Um, it has the ability to put in your website. And if you don't have one, you can create a landing page with Google My Business for free. Um, it also gives your hours of operation and any special hours if it were a holiday or a special, um, a special day, especially right now. They actually even have a COVID-19 special place where you can put information. Are you open for business? If you're not, are you servicing clients with a you know, pickup or, um, or online services? Now, it's fairly simple to start with this, but I will give you the caveat that it can get a little complicated. So you can go to Google My Business dot, I'm sorry, google.com slash business or business dot google.com. You have to have a Google account and you'll need to enter your business name, address or area of coverage, uh, your business category, and a phone number or website address. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is have you already acquired your page? Have you already claimed your page? If you have claimed your page, and, and I ran into this earlier today, the page was claimed, but we're not sure what the email address is. So these are really important steps prior to getting your page online. If you visit a page and you see, or if you do a Google search for your business name 
and on the right hand side of the listing you see something that says claim this business that means that you have not claimed that business and that we can take that and start the process you're going to have to go through a verification the verification is for your benefit because you don't want just anybody claiming your business and neither does Google. So what has to happen is you have to get verified. They are going to ask you for your address. If again, if you have a business that you're working at home, you obviously don't want to leave your home address there. What you can do is to put your um, address in there so they can send you this verification postcard. It's very clearly labeled. It has, um, you know, that it's a Google, from Google My Business. It's a postcard that you can open. It's secure, so it's sealed. Um, nobody can see the special code they send you. And then you're going to um, have this code. Um, hold on a sec. I just want to mute um, a few people because I'm getting some background noise here. Um, what you're going to have to do is enter this code into a verification area of Google My Business. And this says, yes, it's me and I'm there. Now, when you do this, again, if you don't have a physical location, it has to be mailed to your home address and you need to put in that information to your business. I've done this multiple times. It usually takes five days, but right now, things are a little bit taking a little bit longer, but this is the perfect time to start. So if you do not have a Google My Business page, um, you're in a great time to at least start the process. So what can you do with a Google My Business page? What, what is its purpose? Well, it's another way of promoting your business. And if it's free, we should be taking advantage of every free promotion we can get. Keep in mind, Google is used by seven, is 78 percent of people worldwide use Google as their primary search engine. The more you feed Google, the more it gives you back. So the more information that you're putting on there, the greater, greater organic searches and results you're going to receive for your business. You can do things like add photos or videos to your business listing. The first thing, of course, you want to do is add your logo to your business profile. You also want to have a cover photo. You're seeing this restaurant here on the right hand side has a nice picture of the interior of their um, of their building. They could also put uh, one of their dishes or they could put something else that's in, um, if it's the chamber, for example, they could put a picture of their board. It could, they could put a picture of their office. It, it depends on what you think is going to be the most engaging and that best represents your business. And then you can put hundreds and hundreds of photos on top of the, inside of this, um, adding to highlight different features of your business that customers can consider when they're making their purchase decisions. So for example, if you're a restaurant, you may want to have pictures of the different foods that you offer. It could be a picture of your menu. It could be a picture of the outside of your restaurant as well as the inside of your restaurant. So think about the things that you feel are items that are of interest to your clients. If I'm running a health, and we have a few people here that do health and wellness, I could put in the promotions that are happening right now. I could put pictures of graphics that I have. Um, so you're really not limited to what you can promote on this. Um, you know, there are certain rules, obviously, as well as any other thing. But more, the more you put out there, the more you're going to reach the, that target audience that you're seeking. So definitely start thinking about those photos that you have. Now, on top of doing photos on Google My Business, you can also put different posts, like, you know, think about a Facebook post on your business page or a LinkedIn post on your business page. There are different categories and things that you can use to promote your business on Google My Business, on your Google My Business account. So right now there's something special that they have, which is a COVID-19 update. In that, something I could do is like, we are still servicing our clients remotely. 
If you need assistance, we are also offering free training classes. So I can put things like that, or we are closed right now, but we are teaching classes virtually. Um, you know, so anything that you're doing, you know, uh, again, I keep going back to the chamber. Here's the thing where I can put my meetings um, and say, we are meeting virtually, check out our events. So that's the COVID-19 update, and that's going to be here for a while. Um, add offer. This, as you can see on the right-hand side here, I put um, one, an offer by a dog grooming um, uh, business. And here it has a little write-up. It has a cute, engaging photo. It also has a button, and this is with the offer that you can do that will link directly to, in this case, booking. You can add an update, anything that's going on in your business. You can add an event. For example, this workshop is an event on Google My Business. I can also add products. So I have a book, I have a website offer, I have a Google My Business helping offer. You know, so all of these things that, that I offer in my business that are products that are, you know, that I can service people, I can put in there, not just a physical product. If I'm selling something physically, like for example, you know, if Lisi wants to do, um, you know, an auto repair, like a coupon or a $10 off coupon or things like that, he can put that in offer, but he can also offer like oil change specials as a product. So you can use these posts um, in various ways. I strongly suggest taking these things like adding events and using them because that also when people search for events in whatever town these things will come up as well so it's and it's um it's also going to show up in the mapping section because this is all integrated together with google and all of their services the other portion and and i need to caveat this in the beginning and that this is reviews reviews are um, available on google my business however Right now, there is limited functionality to Google My Business overall. And one of the areas is reviews. So with reviews, you are going to have, people may submit them, but you may not see them. But take a look at this for, your, for, future, um, for future use, okay? The Google reviews are critical. This is your, it's sort of like, the word of mouth electronically or the new word of mouth. This is how people are going to say, oh yeah, somebody, I remember this, or reading these reviews is very important. So you want people to take a look at this very seriously. Um, I tend to see Google, you will get the happy people giving you great reviews usually over something like Yelp where that seems to be where people complain a lot. So use Google your, um, My Business to drive traffic to have those happy clients review you there. Um, it's a great way for, you know, to take your valuable word of mouth marketing uh, to the next level. The other piece of a review is to respond to the reviews. Make sure that you show your potential clients that you value your business. It's not just the existing ones, but it's the potential ones. Because remember, people are looking at your Google My Business page. If they review it, they want to know that you at least saw it. I mean, I did a review on a Broadway um, theater that I went to. I thought they managed it really well, and I left a review. Their people replied to my review, and I was like, wow, here's a big organization. I just listed my review, and they replied to me. It made me feel like a, value, a valued customer. It also shows other people who might be looking at the review that I posted, oh, look, that business replied to them, they, they care. And it, it's, not, it's knowing that you can do this, not knowing, it's not that you don't care, it's that maybe you didn't realize that you could reply to these reviews. Um, keep in mind that you will be posting publicly when you reply to these reviews. Um, and I would suggest even if you get a negative review to reply to it, but reply to it in a positive manner. Remember, it is public and other people are seeing this. Um, take it as an opportunity if you get a negative review to say something like, I'm so sorry you had this experience. We value your opinion. We would like to 
contact you uh, to see if there's a way that we can help rectify the situation. Uh, so take a negative and turn it into a positive, um, which, which would be great. Um, so I mentioned that you can look at insights with your business, um, how something performs. You're posting a lot of things, maybe you're posting um, offers and you wanna see what kind of traction you're getting so you know where to focus your energy for future posts. So these are some of the, ins these are three areas where you can track. So you can see where customers view your business on Google. This section tracks the number of times people saw your business information on Google Maps and Google Search. Customer actions, whether they request directions. Um, this feature tracks the number of clicks for driving directions from a local search on Google Maps, which is kind of cool. You have a physical location and how customers search for your business. This section shows you how many customers found you in a direct search. They search your business name and address versus discovery search where they search for a category product or service. Now that's where you're running into the two different, the direct meaning they're looking for, you know, fit stop delivery um, or are they looking for healthy food near me? You know, those are the difference between a discovery versus a direct. What I also do is I offer this free business toolkit on my website and I'm always adding to this every day. I'm adding, and when I find a really cool resource that's online and it's free or if it's low cost, I'm going to populate this in my page and, and we'll revisit that in a second. And that's basically, that's basically our presentation for today.